This is the Delta Upsilon Fraternity House in London, Ontario. This is what it looked like inside 10 days ago. And this is what's going on inside right now. Stop! This is me. I'm out here trying to survive. This is Canada's worst handyman. The saw doesn't like me. The nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman were selected from over 300 submissions sent in by you. Oh, You want to finish it? The candidates who turned out to be the absolute worst each wanted admission into our Handyman Rehabilitation Centre to overcome a particular problem. Simon, a retired school teacher, Is this reverse? has no ability to focus. Let's try the other one. Doesn't work. Simon's stunning lack of concentration. You think if I got a heat gun that it would work? Has him constantly spinning out of control. Hey, it's nothing new. We're having a nightmare of a day again. In North Sydney, Cape Breton, Simon's wife, Linda, believes he will never change. It's Linda, impossible. I can That's do impossible. Everything. You're so hyper. Uh, Corey is the first nominee we've ever had. Ow! Who hates building. I want to bust that thing in half now. That's the weirdest thing for me, that you would want to come to Handyman Rehab, but you hate building. It's because Kim wants me to get better. Kim is Corey's fiance, and in Burns Lake, BC, their dream is to build a house from scratch. I'm pretty confident I could build a house. I built a lot of tree forts when I was a kid. The next Canada's Worst Handyman candidate, Angela, is in rehab to overcome her quitting addiction. I wanna cry. At home in Spruce Grove, Alberta, Angela has started and quit dozens and dozens of home renovation projects. And her spouse, Matt, has had enough. I want her to either learn how to do it properly or to completely cease and desist. That's not good? No. The next nominee, ex-military man Matt, is in rehab to get safer. There's our workbench. In Elmsdale, Nova Scotia, Matt's friend, Silent Keith, nominated him for reasons he won't go into. I think I've been nominated for Canada's Worst Handyman because all my projects aren't done. They're done good enough for me, but they're not done to code, I guess. We ran out of side, and it should be a foot or two feet underneath the ground. The roof needs to be redone, too. There's just too much to list. And the final Canada's Worst Handyman nominee is Dean. Oh, do you know what you're going to do? No. Dean needs to be rehabilitated from his innocence. First time doing a job like this? Yeah. Everything's first time here, Andrew. Growing up in High Prairie, Alberta, Dean learned to play hockey, while his brother Doug learned carpentry and electrical skills. He learned all that stuff and I didn't really give a crap. Dean gives a crap now because Doug recently moved four hours away and without Doug. You want me to fix it? Dean will have to do all his own repair work. As Soon as my brother leaves, I, I don't know, I screw up. When we finish every project in rehab, the person responsible for the lousiest work well, that's a fail. will be named Canada's Worst Handyman. To teach the self-named Wolfpack all they need to know about home repair, we have two experts, contractor Jeff Woodmansey and home renovator Gail Prosser-Craig. So today you're going to learn how to build a studded wall with steel studs, okay? In a wood wall, 
your studs are placed with the centers every 16 inches apart. The pieces holding the studs in place are called the top plate and... This is called a bottom plate. With steel studs, we have something called tracks. Track, okay. <laughs> tracks have no holes. You take your tin snips, make your cut here, cut on the other side, fold it, continue your cut all the way through. Now I have my stud. Studs have holes. What are the holes for? Is that for wiring and everything? The circles are for electrical wire. This teardrop part is for something called a strengthening channel. That comes later. First, nice and flush at the end. Gail shows how to attach a stud to a track. And just give it a little clamp together, okay? Using a self-tapping framing screw. When the wall is completely built, it's time for the strengthening channel. To see how good they are at problem solving. That's how you cut this. We're not showing Canada's worst handyman how to permanently install the strengthening channel. We're just showing them where it goes. Goes in through this hole. It's up to our bad handyman to figure out how the strengthening channel should be locked in place. Oh. The bad handymen don't know it yet, but at the end of their 16 days in rehab, the work they do to the upstairs bedrooms don't go crazy now. will be inspected by the real Delta Upsilon frat boys who will be living here in September. When they see what's been done to their living space, duct tape does apparently fix everything. The Delta Up frat boys will help us decide who is. What have you done to my room? Canada's worst handyman. Keeping an eye on the place throughout the building process is a proud Delta Upsilon member who actually lived in this house some years ago. A-list celebrity, Alan Thick. That's right, Andrew, I am Alan Thick, A-list celebrity. That's what I just said. The stud walls our handyman build, Burr, go sleep, I can handle this, can be placed in their room anywhere they like. Corey wants to put his stud wall at the foot of his bed. All I gotta do is drill that together. After just nine minutes of cutting and bending and screwing... Man, I'm a freaking good carpenter now. Who are you? Corey believes his wall is almost... Done. But his holes don't line up. Hmm. Got one stud that's a little short here. You gotta put a bar through here after. I cut it wrong. Simon. What's going on here anyway? Has made the same mistake. Well, why? They should all be the same. They're not. They're not even close. This one. There's no top or bottom, is there? You must have put that, that hole doesn't go inside. Oh my God of God. Sorry. The studs do have a top and a bottom. To get them lined up, studs should always be cut on the top end. Oh wait. What? What'd you do? Contractors like steel studs because they're cheaper than wood. They weigh practically nothing, they never split, they won't grow mold, they can't catch fire, and assembly is quick. For Nova Scotian Matt, removing a chunk of his baseboard so his new wall can attach to his existing wall is not quick. That's gonna take a month of Sundays to chip through a baseboard with a chisel. Matt tries cutting the baseboard with a circular saw, a hacksaw, and a jigsaw before going back to ruining his chisel. Meanwhile, across the hall, Corey notches out his baseboard in 15 seconds. When Matt's notch is finally complete, he solves the mystery of how to lock in the channel support by cutting it too long, bending the excess material up, 
forcing the piece in place, and screwing it in. This is exactly what needs to be done to pass a building code inspection. I would say it's a pass. I would too, sir. Matt likes working with steel studs. It's quick, easy, and clean. Corey absolutely agrees. Nice thing about metal. Guess what? The bend. If drywall was attached to this stud right here, beautiful. There'd be nothing solid to back it. That one's fine. That one's fine. Now we got issues. Oh, well, that's easy fix. That's backwards. Bingo. Corey stays with it and fixes everything. Every day I'm just getting better. Like, I'm, I'm pumped. Dean is pumped, too. Woo! I'm done. Dean's rehabilitation is definitely underway. I'm here to learn, and I've never done that in my life, and I can go back home and take that knowledge, and I'll, I'll remember. Simon looks like he may never get done. That didn't work. I'm confused. Eventually, Simon's wall goes into his opening, but his channel support remains loose. Can you knock it and tap it in with your hammer? I will, yeah. For a guy who moves so fast, Simon sure is slow. I'm not learning. I gotta smarten up. Angela is learning so much, she even figures out how to correctly install the channel support piece. Remember, we're gonna fold one end down. I know. Angela's finished wall is perfect. I just finished my partition wall, and I think I did awesome. When we come back, Canada's worst handyman put up drywall. Whoops. The nominees for Canada's worst handyman have framed walls using steel studs. We're done. Now, they're learning how to finish them. We're gonna learn how to drywall our walls. Gail shows the bad handyman how to cut drywall. Yes, and then it just breaks. And screw it to the steel studs using fine thread drywall screws and a special bit called a dimpler. Let the dimpler do his job. See how that is perfect? Yeah. Paper's not broken. When the corner beads are attached, Gail prepares to plaster the seams. You have two options. Paper tape, mesh tape. The difference is personal preference, not quality. Back on day one, when Canada's worst handyman went to the supply store... Drywall stuff, nice. They had to choose which kind of tape they wanted to buy. Oh, my lord of lord. <coughs> tape. Angela wanted mesh tape, but... This stuff is crap. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Trying. Her husband Matt insists that paper tape is a superior product. Back in class, the bad handyman learned that mesh tape has one sticky side. So you can just put that right on the wall. If you prefer paper tape, you're going to apply mud first. The plaster is what makes the paper tape stick. Okay. Now we have to put another coat of mud on to hide the tape. The identical technique is used to cover the mesh tape. Start at one end and just drag it across. Gail's job looks rough because she isn't close to done. Plastering is a three-coat job. As your next coats go on, feather it wider and wider. The next challenge for Canada's worst handymen is covering their steel studs with drywall and then getting it plastered. Dean thinks this challenge will be easy for him. I can handle this. When Dean designed his wall, he wanted it... Hockey board level. Hockey board level is oh, four, high, eh? four feet. 
exactly four feet is perfect because sheets of drywall are four feet wide. But... Chiprock's four feet. What size is that? Four feet, one, two, well, three, three, four feet. Four. In Matt's room, Silent Keith wants 40 winks. I'll wake you up if I need you, bud. Simon wants to fill these gaps, and he wants to do it with steel mesh. So this staple gun, right. you can't be delicate with it. You got to bang. There it is, OK? Ah, uh, OK. <laughs> Everyone else is measuring, marking, cutting, oh. kicking, and even punching. Yes, punching. Their drywall. Most people, though, are creating pieces that are too large. And now... What? You're that far off. They're shaving them down to size with improper tools. Do you know what this is? Not really. Some kind of girl wood grinder? It's not a wood grinder, actually, no. It's a drywall rasp. Let's say you cut an eighth of an inch too big. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay? It's just like a cheese grater, except it's for drywall. Okay? So if your piece is a little bit too big, you can rasp it down with this. What if it's too small on that side? Well, then you cut a new piece. A new piece may also have to be cut by mass. Ooh. If Corey doesn't want a serious imperfection, he should really be wearing safety glasses. Let's watch that again in slow motion. The shard of pointy metal sticks into Corey's head before he is able to close his eyes. With a slightly different trajectory, this mishap could have been serious. I just nailed myself with a piece of uh, tin. I was dumb. But Corey is lucky, and in no time, his eyes are being used to read the instructions on his bag of plaster. Three parts powder, one part water. Corey carefully measures one part powder and three parts of water. I better double check that uh, recipe. Mixing this plaster. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Doesn't seem easy for anybody. That's a little fast. Now my thing won't work. Hey, oh, hey, your hey, 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 hey. Simon's wall is going to need a lot of plaster. Make sure you keep it smooth. This is the first coat, Linda. Why did I just go with this instead of just a plain thing? The plain drywall probably would have been a better choice. Uh, I failed anyway, so... Simon has lots of plastering in his future. Most people would be done with three coats. It'll probably take me about five coats. Mixing the plaster shouldn't take five fingers. So, Corey, just show me on the instructions there where it says to mix the stuff with your hand. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. says mix slowly, but I was trying to go fast and it... Uh... Did you read the instructions? I browsed them. Corey's hands-on plaster experience has turned him off plaster. I'm never drywalling again. I'm going to pay someone to do our house if we build one. <laughs> Why is there an F? When we build a house. Matt has to plaster his house when he gets back to Nova Scotia. He's got a great hand with the putty knife. Really? Really. Matt passes. Compared to the drywall that's done in other parts of the house, yeah, that's a, that's a definite pass. Angela's job. That was cool. Is still unfolding. I know I'm the slowest worker ever. And other things. Dumbest. Angela eventually succeeds. No thanks to her husband. Well, Matt's acting negative. I just want to, like, kick him out of the room and just get out of here. Like, I just, I don't even want him there because it's too much. 
Dean spends so much time trying to get his pieces of drywall to fit. Come on, another one. That in the end, yeah! he doesn't even begin plastering. Whoops. Dean? Is this challenge is worst? After dry drywalling today at rehab, I am ready to go finish my room with drywall because I've learned so much in it and I and it's actually kind of simple. When we come back, I'm gonna throw a single window. The nominees for Canada's worst handyman make chairs. I don't know why everybody else is going and mine is not. That, that, you explain that to me. It's time for a frat house bender. For this episode's bender, we're bending the pipe. This is a pipe bender. Cost only 60 bucks, and you can use it to bend tubing just like that. So, the next challenge for Canada's worst handyman is to bend a whole bunch of pipe and, uh, well, make a chair. Except the seat of their chair will be made of decks from skateboards. For pipe, we're using electrical conduit. When you get it cinched into the bender, you make sure that bending part keeps contact with the pipe. It will come without kinking, okay? Marks on the bender here indicate the degree of angle achieved. Right now, I'm at 40 degrees. If I want to keep going to a 90, I'll just keep on going. Bending pipe is just that simple. Making a skateboard chair will be a challenge for our expert Jeff as well. He's never made one of these things before. He starts by accurately measuring and marking for the depth of his seat. But he intentionally makes all the legs slightly too long. That came out great. With the bends identical, Jeff evens up the length of his legs. To attach the frame pieces together... You got a pre-drill. You need a little pilot hole, then you follow it with the bigger bit. A large bit would slip and slide on the smooth metal, but by pre-drilling a small hole, the big bit has something to bite into. Everything's drilled out. It's just a matter of assembly. I'm going to use a carriage bolt, a nut, and a washer. To put together this simple chair, it took me about 45 minutes. Jeff's chair can be used as a reference by the handyman. One by one. The nominees take their twisted measurements. 16 inches on the bottom. Instead of bending a tape measure around the leg, Angela uses string and a red crayon. So this is the first mark. For what? The curve in the leg. Putting the curve in Angela's leg. Oh, I kinked it. Shoot. Ah! The inevitable fight begins. We have 90? Nope. Check. It's not at Check. 90. It's not. Check. It's not. Check. It's not. It's not safe to hacksaw towards someone's face. When Dean gets his first pipe bent, the result isn't what he expects. What do I do, bro? We're totally wrong. Simon is also wrong. See, now this one is bent a little bit more than this one. Matt is also wrong. Ah, oh, for sake. And Angela has been wrong repeatedly. I thought you measured. I did. Let's just let me think, okay? Just let me think. Because I did the same thing three times now. Yeah, you have. Corey is the only builder whose chair <laughs> is starting to actually look like a chair. That looks really nice. In Dean's room, the whole idea of a chair huh? has crashed and burned. We didn't do the back. Why not? I kept screwing up on the bending. No. Dean says he's making a bench to sit on, but his first inclination is to stand on it. <laughs> Dean has no eye for detail. 
When they showed me that, I turned my eyes, I just went, bing! Simon's custom-made legs are both unique. Would you measure wrong or what? But he tries to press forward. I can't get it started. What, what am I doing wrong? Do you press on it right away? My God, I would hope so. Oh, look at that. It works. Thank you. With a closer look, I realize Simon is drilling. Oh, Linda. Oh. And not just for one minute. Am I on drill? No, I'm not on drill. I, I don't think I... Two, I don't know. Oh, sure, turn it up to two. See if spinning it twice as fast that direction works. After two full minutes of reverse drilling, I tell Simon to press the yellow button. Press the button? That will make it spin the right direction. You've been in reverse for a long time, my friend. That's hard to believe. No, not with me. It's not hard to believe at all. Now you're going the right way. Unreal, huh? Unreal. I'd say that's unreal. Over in Matt's room. Actually, that feels wicked, but... Matt's chair has a low-angled back, designed specifically for a purpose Matt feels the frat boys will appreciate. Lap dance! Come on, Linda, I need you for a second. Give us a little dance there, sweetheart. Matt's chair creates a lasting impression. How was the lap dance? Beautiful lap dance, thank you. <laughs> Across the hall. I know it's not perfect to your perfect standards, but... The skateboard chair in Corey's room is coming together, but with a little less joy. <sighs> is that just a seat or is it a love seat? <laughs> Just a seat. Oh. A pass should be happier than this. I didn't get a lap dance like, my God, what's with that? I'm all lonely in my room, no lap dance. In Angela's room... I want to cry. There's also no dancing. Well, that's not too bad, hey? It's a little... I think, I think it's a big piece of junk, personally. Angela's biggest building problem... <laughs> is Matt's negativity. What do you mean we're not going to be able to? Well, that's f***ing Ange. I love you, Angie. No, oh, you don't. <laughs> You're lying. Married. Just like that. Maybe this couple shouldn't work together. I'm trying to do something good here. I'm trying to learn and do it. And he's just, there's no support. Like, he just stands there like, after two hours. No hammer required for this job. Simon has nothing to show for his efforts. We're done, Simon. Yeah. Fail. You can say that again. Another failure. When we come back, motorized shelves go up. Houston, we have a problem. Good handymen don't have to do a whole lot of heavy lifting anymore. These days, things can go up and down at the push of a button. Building a mechanized, motorized shelving unit for their bedrooms, come back here, is the next challenge for Canada's worst handymen. I mean, it's such a cool thing. Why don't we shoot it from out there? Our experts, Jeff and Gail, read their instructions and learn. The most critical part about this is how to mount it to the structure. The hidden structure of a standard ceiling is created by these boards here called joists. The first thing we want to do is locate the joist in our ceiling. An electronic stud finder will locate joists with a beep. If you have a ceiling made of thin drywall. When we hear that sound, that is the location of our joist. Canada's worst handyman have 100-year-old plaster ceilings. Houston, we have a problem. And stud finders won't work on 100-year-old plaster. Hmm. 
okay, well, I don't know what to do. The motorized shelf kit comes with instructions. And the instructions do explain how to find the hidden joists. Using a stud finder at a very fine drill bit. Instead of using a fine drill bit, Matt sticks a screw into his ceiling, looking for something solid. Making a straight line of exploratory holes is fine because the shelf's motor gets bolted to the joists with a steel plate. That steel plate will completely cover any exploratory holes. Matt is proof positive that the instructions will work if they're followed. Matt is making unspeakable improvements. So do you still think I'm Canada's worst handyman? Instead of drilling small exploratory holes to find her joists... That's not going to help us. Angela wants a hole larger than her head. I would do 12 by 12 first off. Dean creates a hole of an unpredictable size. Ah, uh, we have a problem. And unfocused Simon. What is that, anyway? Well, Simon goes on a veritable joist hunting expedition that involves half a dozen tools. Well, I tell you, I got the studs and I'm reading the instructions. Are you going to wing it, or do you want me to read the instructions? Uh, I could probably just wing it. Winging it with a sledgehammer is never a good idea. Oh my goodness, I can't believe you just did that. Looks like dirt. Next door, it looks like Dean is voiding the warranty on his unit by cutting the mounting bracket in two. And you're, you're cutting that wide? So it'll fit right from there to there. But does it talk about cutting this in the instructions? No. OK. All right. Mounting this hacked up bracket would be exceedingly dangerous. Again, I didn't read instructions, and I was trying to go ahead, and uh, I was cutting things and trying to take a shortcut. Corey's shortcut has led to a long way home. I put my drill somewhere around here. <laughs> drill bit set. Where are you, drill bit set? Corey believes that merely getting his shelf operational will constitute a pass. Watch your head. Corey is missing the point. <laughs> That's cool. Angela is missing four square feet of plaster. And that's one ugly hole you made in your ceiling. <laughs> Wait, we're going to put some plywood up there or something. Oh, some plywood. That'll make some, it look lovely. Some, a beautiful decorative plywood piece. Uh-huh. On the upside, Angela's lift works. Yeah. If you just follow the instructions, this stuff works. Simon can't concentrate on the instructions long enough to follow them. Minutes of reading would save hours of confusion. He wants me to read the instruction, read the instruction, but I still got to do the work. When we come back, I drink my coffee. Corey leads the group project. Now what should I do? Oh, you need something to do? Um. Trying to get Canada's worst handymen to work together as a group is a lot like trying to herd kittens. Just when you get them all settled down, they all get riled up because one of them starts thinking for themselves and then all hell breaks loose. Believe me, I'm really glad I'm not the foreman of the next group challenge.
for today's group challenge, Corey is the foreman. We're gonna work fast today. The jobs Corey must oversee are hooking up all of the kitchen plumbing and finalizing the body of the kitchen island. To kick things off, the island is brought up to proper height. Maybe more. It's leveled and it's screwed permanently in place. Good. Now what should I do? Oh, you need something to do? Um... Outside, under the watchful eye of expert Jeff, Dean uses a grinder to slowly cut the aluminum sheeting that will cover the island. Perfect. Hi, right, go, buddy. Whoa, 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 turn off the tools. <laughs> In the chop shop, I show Matt the most modern plumbing product. This is PEX pipe, right? Okay. You can bond that to copper. Making that bond is simple. It goes together with uh, crimping rings. You put that on. You stick the coupling in, jam it in all the way. It takes a bit of force. You use the crimper to cinch that thing tight there. But first, Matt needs this coupling to connect to the old copper pipe. Matt plumbed his own house in Nova Scotia with traditional copper. So he knows how to cut pipe, then clean it, then scuff it up, add a substance called flux, attach the coupling, add heat, dab on a soft metal called solder, and turn off the fire alarm. Outside, Jeff shows Dean another tool that will cut the diamond plate, the reciprocating saw. You don't want that jumping around. That's the, that's the key to the reciprocating saw. This part of the saw is called the shoe. If the shoe is not in contact with the surface of what's being cut, the reciprocating saw blade can snap off and fly away. Dean, look, that, look down that line. Good, but crooked. Good, but crooked? Come <laughs> on. It's not good because it is crooked. To make crooked edges straight, you can see how, how much is sticking out. The lads mark the offending area, then grind it off. A little better? Oh, yeah. In the basement... You're strong. You can do it. <laughs> Matt is showing Angela how to make PEX pipe engage to the male end of a coupling. That's good enough for the girls I go with. Then Matt slides on a ring and marries the fitting together with his crimper. Did you watch American Idol? No. Is that online? Nice. There's lots of nice work happening. That is beautiful. What really is beautiful about this challenge... Oh, that's beautiful. ...is that the hands-on foreman understands what his team is doing. And as a result... This thing's done. ...tasks are being completed. Let her go. Yes! We need a howl! Yes! Oh, ooh, indeed. The wolf pack killed it today. <laughs> I'm on cloud nine right now. It's, I feel good. After the break, we name this episode's worst handyman. Recently, in the Delta Upsilon fraternity house, fiascos have reigned supreme. In fact, it's a wonder the builders in here still have a roof over their heads. In this edition of Canada's Worst Handyman... I cut my uh, struts in the park, brother. The nominees installed a mechanical shelf. She's rising. They cut pipe to make a chair using skateboard decks. Actually, it feels wicked. And they put up a steel stud wall. Oh. Woo, done. That they covered in sheetrock and plaster. Make sure you keep it smooth. This is the first coat, Linda. Everyone learned a lot this show. Hopefully, Corey learned to stop cutting corners. Who was the worst handyman this episode? The experts are about to make their final inspections, starting in Simon's room. 
So let's talk about the uh, things that didn't work for you. Nothing worked. The, the chair. The chair. <laughs> Simon's chair is like a postmodern conceptual art piece symbolizing chaos in a twisted world. You're very disorganized. Mm -hmm. Over there, here, there, here, there. That's me. Concentrate. Yeah. Slow down. Okay. It's one job at a time. How can we make you focus better? I have no idea. Simon is learning how to do these projects correctly. But it's just that I can't put in practice. It's as simple as that. You know, I feel like if you cleaned up your room, you would feel less overwhelmed. Matt is never overwhelmed. You're unflappable, man. Thank yeah. you. Any failures this episode? I hope not. I hope not, too. When Matt walked into rehab, he already knew how to build walls, follow instructions, and use obscure building materials. Whereas Angela didn't. Not so good? No. What is good is Angela's stud wall. Well, it turned out pretty good, I think. And her plastering. I would call the, the mudding job a, a success. What's successful here is that Angela got her lift to work by staying with the instruction pamphlet. I read it and read it and read it and read it and then figured out each step to do and then it ended up working out. In Quarry's room, his joist reconnaissance mission didn't work out. How many joists did you have to find? Um, I had to find two joists. How many joists are visible? Ah, uh, four. That's an enormous repair job. At this point, you probably have to replace your whole ceiling. I don't know. I got no excuse for that one. Dean has no excuse for hacksawing his mounting place in two and then going ahead and installing it. Dean, this has to be totally rectified. This isn't your plaster is a little bit funny. This is gonna fall down on someone. This is serious, like, yep. and you can see it. I yep. know you know that. Oh yeah. This is condemned. This episode's worst comes down to Simon, who failed every challenge, and Dean, who dangerously modified and then hoisted a heavy lifting device. So, the worst for this episode. Who do you got? It's obvious. Who do you have? It's obvious. The weird news is it's obvious to me too. I need to go say who it is. Before naming this episode's worst, I give the prize for the most improved to... Angela. Yes! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Your ceiling lift goes up and down really well. Your stud wall is nice. Your plastering is tidy. Congratulations. Thank you. Which brings me to the worst. The worst handyman for this episode is... <laughs> Simon. I'm gonna ask you to come here and hang your head in shame, sir. Mm -hmm. Simon was named the worst this episode because of his ridiculous plastering, his incomplete shelf lift, and his twisted pipe chair. Let's see if I can put this straight. <laughs> this is becoming a habit, Simon. I don't want to see you here again. No, I hope not. No. You guys are free to go. I'm going to take old Mr. School Teacher upstairs for a final piece of homework. Let's <laughs> go. On, buddy. In an effort to create better self-awareness, the homework we're giving this ex-school teacher is to give yourself a report card right now on how your progress has been through this educational experience so far. Oh, yeah, it hasn't been good. Since Simon's been here, he's been trying, but he's not accomplishing anything. So he's got to put more effort into his work and concentrate, focus on the task and do it. Simon has a potential and he's going to improve. Overall grade? <laughs> D. D worst? <laughs> yeah, D worst is right. <laughs>
on the next episode of Canada's Worst Handyman. Maybe this is my day, you never know. The nominees learn how to weld. Welding? Weld? Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. They repair broken windows. Corey! You're gonna need that frame later. And they turn their bedrooms Woo! into party rooms. It's a buzz, a buzz, a buzz.